Good morning and welcome to Faith and Healing School at Abundant Grace Church. We'll open with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the honor and the privilege of staying here to tell people about your love and about your son, about all that you've done for us and prepared for us, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way here today. Guide all my words. Let the people have expectant ears, because you'll meet them right at their point of need, no matter what it is. You've got something for everybody. <clears throat> and if they pay attention, if they come expecting, they'll get exactly what they need from you. I yield to you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank everybody for joining us online and in here in person. Another gorgeous day from the Lord. So thankful for every morning, especially the ones that start so beautiful like this. We're going to open up our class with the Ephesians and the Colossians prayer. Because when I pray these, I expect to receive from God. And so should you. As I go through the scriptures, as I teach the scriptures, I receive from the Lord spiritual wisdom and revelation also. Because I ask, I ask him for it. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. I pray to you, the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better. Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. I will also know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength for me, a believer. You worked with that same power in Christ when you brought him back to life and you gave him the honor position, the one next to you, the Father on the heavenly throne. Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, and all other names that can be named. Not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him. You have made him the head of everything for the good of the church. The church is his body and completes him and fills. He fills everything in every way. That is basically a prayer of salvation when you pray that also. Except for the part where you had just asked for forgiveness for any sins that you've committed. You should always recommit yourself every morning to following the Lord, to thanking him for all he's done for us. If you've never made Jesus your Lord and Savior, take a minute right now. That prayer opens up. Praying to the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ. Have you made him your Lord and Savior? There's so much more for you if you do that. Just ask for forgiveness. God wipes the slate clean. And you can move on and receive him in your heart. And receive all that he has for you. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. I'm asking you, God, to give me a gift from the wealth of your glory. I pray that you would give me your inner strength and power through your spirit, that Christ will live in me through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. This way, with all of God's people, I'll be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep your love is. I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I am praying this so that I can be completely filled with you, Father God. Glory belongs to you, whose power is at work in me. And by your power, you can do infinitely more than I could ever ask or imagine. Glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 13. Just praying these. When you pray them, get your spirit fired up. Get your soul and emotions going in the right direction. Pray them with confidence. Don't read them. Pray them. Declare them. Colossians. For this reason, I have not stopped praying about this. I ask you, God, to fill me with your knowledge, the knowledge of your will through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. I ask this so that I will live the kind of life that proves I belong to you. Then I will want to please you in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you. I ask you to strengthen me by your glorious might with all the power that I need to patiently endure everything with joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light, which is what you want me to inherit. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness and brought me into the kingdom of your Son, whom you love. Hallelujah. Amen. We ask God to fill us with knowledge of his will through every kind of spiritual, spiritual wisdom and insight. We have to get this through our spirit, not in our mind, in our spirit, in our hearts. Because that's what's controlling us, is our spirit. That's what needs to be controlling us. That's who we are. That's who we need to put in charge, our spirit. Today we're going to talk about the importance of peace. Medical research estimates that as much as 90% of all illnesses and disease are stress-related. Stress can interfere with your physical bodily functioning and processes. High blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, heart disease have been linked to stress factors. This morning's devotion was called the mind-body connection. The mind is so powerful that it can cause physical ailments to manifest in your body. Stress, anxiety, and depression are all emotions that can cause sickness. I believe that's why peace is mentioned so often throughout the Bible. It's so important to be at peace that Jesus himself gave us his peace. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give. Let not your heart be troubled, neither, neither let it be afraid. Peace. Peace is the direct opposite of stress, anxiety, and depression, to be at peace. It's easy to drift away from God when you're suffering physically. Those little pains, those little annoying diseases, diseases in your body, not a disease, but a dis-ease, something that's just not right. It's a distraction. It draws you away, your mind away from the things of God and his promises. The more you're distracted, the devil likes that a little at a time until you drifted far enough away where you're not at peace anymore. And now those pains are bigger Whatever is going on in your life has become bigger and bigger. It's more of a stress factor. And that just builds, compounds on itself. Because now you're losing that peace. And in the peace, there's restoration and recovery and rest. When this happens, when you drift, you catch yourself, stop, refocus your energies on God instead of on your ailment. Get right with God and experience his peace. And then it will be easier to receive the physical healing that you need. Isaiah 26.3 says, you will keep him in perfect and constant peace. The one whose mind is steadfast, that is, committed and focused on you. 
in both inclination and character. Because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. It's when you'll have peace. When you're focused on God. There is a mind-body connection. And both your mind and your body are subject to your spirit. So take control, focus on God, and receive his peace. 1 Corinthians 9.27, this is the easy read version, says, It is my own body I fight to make it do what I want. Paul telling, telling us that he fights his own body to bring it into subjection. Job 22, 21 in the Amplified says, Now yield and submit yourself to him. Agree with God and be conformed to his will. And be at peace. In this way, you will prosper and great good will come to you. There's a progression of things there. Submit yourself to God and his way of doing things. Agree with God and be conformed to his will. Agree with God in the things he says in his word, that by, your, by his stripes you were healed, that he'll meet all your needs according to his riches and glory. Agree with that. You can't help but be at peace when you focus on agreeing with God and all that he's done. The word peace is in the Bible, Old and New Testament, over 400 times. Peace is pretty important. This psalm keeps coming back in the teachings, and I guess it's pretty important. God wants you to understand this. Psalm 23. This is the New Living Translation. And when I read this, I try to immerse myself in it, into the things that it says and the places it will be, and to find peace there. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all I need. Say that. Agree with God and be at peace. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. Rest. Peace. You need the peace is the opposite of the stress and the anxiety and the depression. Notice he says, you get rest and it leads you by peaceful streams. And then it says, he renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Stress, anxiety, and depression suck the energy right out of you. To make you more susceptible to sickness and disease. Lower your immune system. Cause you to lack sleep. Rest and peace. He renews my strength. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Those are all concepts of peace. Being afraid is the opposite of being at peace. When you're protected and comforted, you're at peace. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely goodness and, 
unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Is there anything but peace in the house of the Lord? You can be at peace just declaring those things. My cup overflows with blessings. It takes your focus off your problems, your ailments. Focus on your blessings. Focus on all the things that God brought you through. You're here right now. You're here in this. He brought you this far. Live in the house of the Lord forever. Live in the house of peace forever. This is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in verse 2 in the Amplified. Now, the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace and spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God, both now and forever. You are a spirit. Take control of your mind and your body. Don't have a mind of the flesh. Have a mind of the spirit. Your spiritual well-being comes from walking with God. And those who are in the flesh, living a life that caters to sinful appetites and impulses, cannot please God. However, you are not living in the flesh, controlled by the sinful nature, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you. You have to yield to the spirit. God gives us free will. You could let the flesh run wild. The, fle the flesh tends to be afraid. That's where you're getting your stress, your anxiety from. Not the spirit. 2 Timothy 1.7 said, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He gave us power. He gave us love and self-control. All those together lead to peace, don't they? Power and love, self-control. It means you can keep your body in subjection. You can cast down those imaginations that come, that bring fear and torment and stress. I'm sorry, this isn't 2 Corinthians. This is Romans 8. In the Amplified. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God. If you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you have the spirit of Christ, and this belongs to you. says, if Christ lives in you, though your natural body is dead because of sin, your spirit alive because of righteousness, which he provides. Your spirit is alive and powerful. Let it guide your flesh. Let it give direction. Jesus already gave us his peace. We have to receive it. We have to choose to receive it by putting our flesh under, by not allowing the imaginations of the devil to take root.
This is the truth right here. That's why we can cast down imaginations that come. Because that's not the truth. Those aren't facts. What's in this, this book right here? This is the Bible. This is fact. This is truth. No matter what any person tells you, if it doesn't line up with God's word, you can cast it down as an imagination. Not fact. Now we'll go on to 2 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace, inner calm, and spiritual well-being from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, grace is strength. Grace, grace is endurance. We prayed this morning. We ask God to strengthen us with his glorious might, with all the power that we need to patiently endure everything with joy. You can sum that all up with God, give me grace. Grace to you and peace, inner calm spiritual well-being from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed, gratefully praised, and adored be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts and encourages us in every trouble so that we will be able to comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. We know we're going to go through things. We're going to face things. But we don't have to be stressed out about it. We don't have to be full of anxiety. We don't have to get depressed. One, it's not going to help us. And two, you won't be a help to anybody else. Very often, we run into people who are going through something we already overcame. It's not a coincidence. It says right here, God's going to comfort and encourage us and get us through our problems so we can comfort and encourage others, get through theirs. But if you're all stressed out and full of anxiety about your problem, how are you going to help somebody else? They're certainly not going to ask you for any help if they see this kind of state you're in. They don't want to look for somebody who's all stressed out. They want somebody who's at peace, calm. That shows strength. When you're going through something, you want to go to somebody who's strong to help you, to pull you up. That's why we go to God, because we know he's all-powerful. He's never-ending strength. Comfort others with the comfort that we got from God. But a few verses back, it started with peace, grace to you, and peace, inner calm, and spiritual well-being from God and from Jesus. Then it goes on, for just as Christ's sufferings are ours in abundance as they overflow to his followers, we're going to go through things. We're on this earth. We're not in heaven yet. We're not in paradise. So stuff's going to happen here. 
So also our comfort, our reassurance, our encouragement, our consolation is abundant through Christ. It is truly more than enough to endure what we must. What God gives us, his grace is always more than enough to get through anything we face. But if we are troubled and distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. Or if we are comforted and encouraged, it is for your comfort, which works in you when you patiently endure the same sufferings which we experience. So, you know, we're all in the same boat. Everything's going to happen to people. Nobody sails through this world untouched. When we go through problems, we're going to overcome them. You got to keep that focus and that attitude. Because people are watching all the time. And when you come through on the other side, you're an encouragement to them. You're a strengthener. It goes on. And our hope for you, our confident expectation of good for you, is firmly grounded, assured, and unshaken. Since we know that just as you share as partners in our sufferings, you also share as partners in our comfort. For we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about our trouble in the west, west province of Asia Minor, how we utterly weighed down beyond our strength so that we were despaired even, in a, even of life itself. Indeed, we felt within ourselves that we had received a sentence of death and we were convinced that we would die. But the... But this happened so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. He rescued us from so great a threat of death, and we will, and will continue to rescue us. On him we have set our hope. And he will again rescue us from danger and draw us near. God always comes through. Not sometimes, not every other time, always. And he will rescue us again from danger and draw us near. While you join in helping us by your prayers, then thanks will be given by many persons on our behalf for the gracious gift of deliverance granted to us through the prayers of many believers. Bad things happen in this world. But my Bible tells me that God will turn things around, work everything for our good. We trust in and believe him, put our faith in him. We don't get all stressed out about our situation. We stay at peace, keep a clear head. And that'll bring glory to him. People that prayed for you while you were going through a situation, that'll boost them up. That boosts their faith. My prayers were answered. Look at that. Look at how great they turned out. Look at how good they came out of that situation. Far and above our expectations. God is so good. And then when something happens in their life, they'll have more peace about it because they know they've seen examples of their prayers being answered. This is our reason for proud confidence. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world in general and especially towards you with pure motives and godly sincerity, not in human wisdom, but in the grace of God, that is, 
his gracious, loving kindness that leads people to Christ and spiritual maturity. This is what we're all talking about. It's about being an example by the way you live and the things you do and the things you say that people will want to be born again. They will want Christ because they see how he works in your life. And that's two-part. It's not just for leading people to Christ, but it's also for spiritual maturity. Help people that are already born again grow up a little bit more spiritually to see the things that God's doing. His abilities are endless. His creative power, his faithfulness, his love. Help everybody grow spiritually. The peace is so important. Nobody's going to leave church feeling all full of confidence if the preacher was up there stressed out, sweating, full of stress and anxiety. He can't preach confidently that way. And it's not going to give confidence to anybody listening. Peace, not turmoil, not stress, not anxiety, not depression, but peace. So much power in peace. Jesus, when they were leading him out, when they brought him before the rulers and they questioned him, he wasn't all stressed out. He knew he was getting crucified. He knew the beating was coming, but he, he had the peace from his father inside of him. So powerful. If he had lashed out verbally, full of stress and anxiety over what was coming, it wouldn't have had the same effect. People would have saw that he's scared. He didn't want to go through all that. He did it for the love that was in him, for the love of us. It said that he prayed in the garden. There was so much stress on his body, he sweat blood. But that stress was counteracted by the peace of the Father, the peace that came. God didn't give us a spirit of fear power, gave him love, gave Jesus self-control, that peace is powerful. Think about if you're in a verbal, somebody's in a verbal argument with you, and you remain at peace, you don't respond. That situation is completely diffused. It's when you react, not in peace, then it escalates. Things get out of control pretty quick. So much power and peace. And even after you leave that situation, now you got all that stress in your body. You're all tensed up. You're all fired up. Your blood pressure's up. You don't feel good. But stay at peace. Jeremiah 29, 11. We all hear this all the time. It's a great scripture. And it brings important light to the importance of peace. This is the Amplified. It says, for I know the plans and thoughts I have for you, says the Lord. Here it is, plans for peace and well-being. They go hand in hand. Not for disaster, to give you future and a hope. God opened my eyes to those, to that phrase right there this morning. 
We always think of Jeremiah 29, 11. Oh, God's got great things for me. Right away, we are thinking financial prosperity and just good things in your life. It says right here, he has plans for peace and well-being. Of course, he has plans for prosperity provision, but you can't enjoy any of that if you don't have peace and well-being to start with. Numbers 6, 24 through 26, also amplified. The Lord bless you and keep you, protect you, sustain you, and guard you. The Lord make his face shine upon you with favor and be gracious to you, surrounding you with loving kindness. The Lord lift up his countenance, his face upon you with divine approval and give you peace, a tranquil heart, and life. All those other things mean nothing if you're not at peace with a tranquil heart and a tranquil life so you can enjoy all those things. Again, we go back to the Colossians prayer. We prayed. We asked for power so that we may patiently endure everything with joy. John 16, 33 in the Amplified. Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you will have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory abiding. Jesus tells us all these things so we can be at peace. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. We're going to close with this scripture. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, in every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And what happens? And then the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Pray, and pray with thanksgiving. Be thankful for what you have. Jesus did that several times when he prayed in the Bible, when he was feeding those people. He brought the bread and the fish, and what did he do? He gave thanks to God. Ask him to bless the food, to give the divine favor. When you're giving thanksgiving, when you're praying, that's displaying your faith. That's your faith in action. When you're thanking God before anything's even be, been, before your prayer is completed, you're already giving thanks to the Father. Make your specific requests known to God. Peace is so important. The devil wants to steal your peace because he knows if you have it, you can whip him any time. 
Jesus did when the devil tempted him. He was hungry. 40 days without eating. But he stayed at peace. He used the word. He beat the devil. He resisted him and he fled. Over and over, Jesus is our example. Resist the devil. Submit to God. That's what Jesus, exactly what he did. He submitted to God. He went to the desert. He spent time praying, focusing on the Lord. And the devil came, and he resisted him, and he had to go. He stayed at peace. I'm just going to read that Philippians 4, 6, and 7 one more time, and we'll close. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, in every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for loving us so much and giving us all that. Not withholding anything for us. Thank you, Father, for this time. I thank you that your word went forth. That it was rich seeds planted in people's lives. And that you'll continue to water that seed that's been planted today. That they'll hear things to back it up. That you'll put people across their path to reaffirm those words. That it will comfort them and they will have peace. The peace that transcends all understanding. That their bodies must fall in line as their spirits experience your peace. That their minds must fall in line with your word. And they are healed. Physically, financially, emotionally, as they experience your peace. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.